Spellbound is, um, it's if you've seen the line of if somebody was casting a spell with a magic wand, it would create those patterns. And then, and then to me, there's a little, I don't know exactly what she is, a little creature in the bottom middle of the painting with a little round face, almost like a Russian doll, quite sad eyes. And she's as if she's caught within that spell. And I love this painting. I think this is one of my favorite paintings. And my daughter said, Mummy, did you actually paint that painting? And I think that's something that's really important. It's one of the things that goes throughout my work is that I don't want it to look painted. I want it to look inevitable. I want the marks to look like they simply grew there, like lichen on a rock or like a shadow across a wall. That they, They're there because they absolutely, there's no other place for them to be. I don't want there to be a sort of contrived this is the brush marks which have made these shadows, which has made this happen. I want there to be a sort of simplicity, inevitability about the surface that that almost doesn't look painted. So that was really lovely. Um, she says some of the best things about my work. She says they're like stories without words. The dancing line shadow skating is very personal to me because the shadow skater, um, which you may not, well, I can see it very clearly anyway, and it's simply the figure without the, the real figure present, but the shadow of a speed skater with long skates. And then the marks that the skates make upon the ice form the pattern. And that skater is, is my mother because she's grew up in Amsterdam and they used to skate with very, very long old fashioned skates on the canals. Um, and so that's, that's the figure in that painting. The place for my angel is is just so precious to me. It's it's about guardian angels and it's about being brave enough to trust in forces perhaps stronger than yourself and believing that 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 you can take risks and it, for me it's a very very important personal painting. Um it's somewhere that if you had an angel, that would be where you'd want them to be. So, and it has many places to explore. And But it's it's also this world. It, the lines in this painting are very, they're the world I inhabit, but it's become a dream world. And this is one of the ones I was saying where I had to lose so much within it that I loved and shed many a, a tear in that process because it, had such beauty and but the overall painting was unbalanced and so in order to create the overall harmony things had to be lost but but this was a painting about which my my daughter also said she said mommy I know I know how hard you work and I know how much you put into these paintings she said but but the angels add the details don't they yeah there are, there are magic in that that is beyond what I could could make myself. So if you look very closely, you'll see that. An angel song is its its partner. It's part of that same process. It's perhaps a, a stormier part um, of that same world. More seascape than landscape, but it's in the same frame of mind. Far Beyond is a very complicated, um, very multi-layered painting and has, for me, many meanings and I would be fascinated to hear what other people see in it, but to me there's a um, craggy, rocky landscape edges and then beyond that distant industrial cities and then in the foreground the a more sort of... Um, surreal faces within within the landscape and this was a painting where I was really trying to sh to explore what is possible with paint that you can't do perhaps in other in other ways of, of um, 
allowing the eye to play over that surface and see, first of all, the more obvious uh, things that your mind would connect to, mist, water, um, sea, uh, a bay, perhaps the sky, and then and then allow yourself to see more surprising things within the foreground and and just um, explore. And and this is one of the things about just daring, I suppose, daring to to allow allow there to be things other within it so that you can spend time with them so that you can it's worth spending time with them because there's things hidden within it that you can you can find and the final the final one the sea of stories it's for me it's like the sea at midnight with the moon shining on it and in one way, very simple, very simple painting, but then the horizon line of the sea isn't, it's a hill line. And so that makes you unsteady. And then perhaps the horizon line is the further line. And so it's a painting which initially might seem very simple, but actually it's again, it's about the fact that it's a painting and it's not a photograph and it's not trying to be so realistic. So, so you can play with it. You can read it as one thing but then not quite be sure where where reality is and then hidden within the sea are these figures almost like russian um peasant figures with headscarves and hats and um they they're sort of as if they're lost and it's it's as if there are so many more stories within within that buried or where the sea comes over the land and obliterates and I'm fascinated in in history and layers and, and the way this painting almost rips through the different layers and and so the fairy foreground is much more rock or surface or but then becomes the sea and you're not quite sure how that happens and then there's space for for mystery, I think, I hope.